Hi, this is Sandra in the Grey Goose Gourmet Kitchen here in Wayne, Maine. And we have company coming over this evening, some family and friends, and I wanted to make a nice appetizer for everyone to enjoy. So I'm going to make my baked brie with our Grey Goose Gourmet Hot Apricot Pepper Jelly. So let's get started. I've got some flour, and I'm going to dust my breadboard here a little bit. And I've got some puff pastry. And it's all been thawed out, and it's very workable right now. So, how I start? I'm going to take my rolling pin, and I want to make this just a little bit larger, get rid of those creases in the inside. You can get different size brie wheels. And this is from our local grocer. And this is an eight ounce brie wheel. So it's one of the smaller ones. I oftentimes use the 12, 12 ounce. It just depends on how many folks you're having. So, I've rolled out my pastry. I'm gonna get my brie all set to go. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do, I've got this beautiful square. I'm actually going to round it and I'm saving my corners because those are going to be used for decorative pieces on top. And you'll see in a moment what I'll do with these. So I'm just going to shape this around. There we go. That's looking nice and round and it's about eight inches or so, maybe a little bit more. So I'm going to take my hot apricot and I'm going to give it a little bit of a stir. And I'm going to put on about probably a, about a third of this jar to start. So I always use it. This is the first thing that goes is the pepper jelly. Now you could use any varieties of pepper jellies. Just we love our hot apricot and love the color too. It's beautiful when it gets opened up. So that's about, yeah, about a third. There we go. So, now that I've got that on, I've got some nice candied almonds. You can use any nut. You could use pecans. You could use pistachios. These happen to be sugar-coated, kind of sautéed, delicious, so they're a little roasted. So I'm going to put a handful of that on, probably yeah, one to two tablespoons. Keep it right on top of the jelly. Then I'm taking some papitas, which are roasted pumpkin seeds here. These are also delicious, and I love the fact that it gives it, you get a little chew, you get a little crunch. You could put in any dried fruits, um, dried cranberries, dried blueberries. You can really get creative with this. Again, I like all the textures going on, and the flavors just all work so nicely together. So I put those on, they're in the center. Now I'm gonna take my brie wheel, and I'm gonna set that gently right on the top. And the nuts shouldn't poke through because they're on top of the jelly. So there we go, it's very centered. Now I'm going to take an egg, use an egg wash, so it'll help seal everything up. And let's see, we're gonna give this, mix this all. And this will help adhere it. It's gonna give a nice shine on the outer crust of the puff pastry. There we go, so I'm gonna Put a nice egg wash around the edge. We just love this in our family, especially the holidays or any special gathering. It just, it's, it's just enjoyed by all and it's beautiful also. And uh, so there we go, I've got the egg wash. So now what I'm gonna do, and people think this is really challenging and it really is not. It's just simply just bringing up the pastry around the brie and then I'm going to invert it. You could do this the reverse method, but I like it so I can put a nice de decoration on top. So I'm just bringing up my brie and I'm kind of folding it off to the top. Not really pulling too much, just letting it do its thing. So it's all, and I just kind of pinch it closed, okay? So that's all set. Now what I'm gonna do, you can do two things. I've got a, a pie plate here and I'm gonna use a piece of parchment. You could use cooking spray as well, just so it doesn't stick. I'm put that here. All right. 
I'm going to turn it over, but before I move it over, I'm going to just get creative on top. Take my egg wash, going to put that all around it again. This will give it the nice shine. It looks so beautiful, and it's so easy to make. You know, this is taking me just a few minutes. I think the longest portion is just to thaw out your, your puff pastry. All right. So that's looking really nice. So remember the, the trimmings. I'm going to be utilizing these. I'm just going to cut some strips like this. I try not to waste this. And anything that I have left, I usually get creative and I'll just bake them off. They're so good. Maybe a little cinnamon sugar. Mm. So take my pieces and I get creative. I do a little twist. I tend to do this like pinwheel form. Really like it. This, and I think I'll cut one more strip here. Doesn't have to be fancy. You could do a nice flower design on top, whatever you choose. And I'm going to take just a little more twist, kind of do a little, a little decorative. But first, I'll put a little more egg wash on here. So again, I want this to be nice and toasty brown. This is then going to go in the oven at 350 for about 30 minutes. I keep an eye on it. When it gets golden, it's all done. I want to make sure that brie inside melts. There we go. Little. There we go. Let's see if we can get this little egg wash on top. There. This is going to be fun. All right. So that's, and now I'm going to, whoops, it looks like I missed a few spots on the edge here. There we go. So now I'm going to very carefully transfer this over to my plate with a parchment. And what's nice about the parchment is you'll be able to, when it's finished, pick that up off the parchment and it should slide right off into a nice serving dish. But if you use the spray, just a nice wide um, spatula and you should be all set. So. This is ready to go into the oven. 350. There we go. Looking good. Set my timer. I'm going to set it for 25 to start and then I'll check it. Probably will need five minutes, maybe a little bit more. When it's golden, when it looks, you know, the color you're looking for, I like golden brown, not too dark, and it's all done. So I want to show you what I've made. Let me just clean this up. And you'll see, I made a brie a little bit earlier to share with everyone. So I'll bring that over and take a peek. Voila. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? So this is what I made. This is what's going to be coming out of the oven in a bit. And here it is. This has been resting for about an hour. I like to let it rest anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes, maybe an hour, because if you cut it open too soon, the brie will ooze out everywhere, but it's nice to enjoy warm. Although you can still reheat this at another time and it's just as good. So let's cut this open and see what we've got here. Oh, this is going to be so good. So what you could do too is you could cut your wedges and then um, use a nice, a nice little server. And I've got to just happen to have a cracker here. We'll put a look at that. You've got the apricot, you've got the pepitas in here, the, um, the uh, almonds. It just looks so delicious. Let's give it a try. Mmm. Really, really nice. Mmm. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We just made a baked brie here at the Grey Goose Gourmet Kitchen with my Grey Goose Gourmet hot apricot pepper jelly. Check out our website, greygoosegourmet.com, or our Facebook page. We've got a nice online shop. Take a peek, and follow, thank you for watching. Follow us along, and learn some other wonderful tips and baking things and cooking in the Grey Goose Gourmet kitchen. Thank you, everybody. So long.